Hi, this is Coach Judith, and we are currently reviewing Stephen's 14th episode in the Quarantine Coding series. We are a couple minutes into his video, and we're going to watch the second half right now. We're going to take that nested clip from earlier and put it right here. And I'm going to give you five challenges. First, can you draw a diagram of how the clips on the video that you're seeing now relate? All right, so he is showing us a video of the last few minutes of the video, I think, and uh, he wants us to draw a diagram of how they review. Let, let's, uh, let's do that individually. Can you write down what you think my process for constructing this video was? Oh, the process. So I confess that I have watched this video once before and I actually wrote down the process and I'm going to review it for you. The first thing Stephen did was he used a program called YouTube DL to download all of the clips from the previous week that he created. Then he um, created a script to run YouTube DL five times so he didn't have to keep typing it in at the command prompt. He wrote the script to run it. Um, then he wrote another program that combines these five video clips that he downloaded and he ran that program on the command line to create a file that he could open up in Shotcut that would take all of the five videos, combine them, and we are watching it here. Third, try it. See if it works. All right. Do you think you could do that? See if you could write all that code. Maybe, maybe it'll be a little bit difficult, but that is a good challenge. See if you can make a video like this. All right. Uh, so that was the third challenge. Um, but I got a little confused because here we were looking at this one speeding up from the last minute where he's on the fourth. We're about to hit the fourth challenge. Here we go. Ask yourself, did you follow the process? And whether you did or not, revise your diagram and revise your process. Uh, so if you used Stephen's process, maybe it worked for you, but maybe it didn't work for you. Maybe you didn't follow Stephen's process. Maybe you wanted to create a video using a different process. Um, so that was the fourth. Revise your process instead of doing Stephen's process. Do your own process, and then you want to check back and see if it worked. If it didn't work, then maybe you want to do a different process for the next time. If it did work, great. Now you have a way to create videos, just like Stephen has a process that he creates his videos. Computer science is the science of process, and according to my process, it's time to clean up those pawns and throw down the pen. Oh, did you see him do the throw down the pen thing? He did that before, but that's how he ends his process. He creates his five minute video, throws down his pen. In the beginning of this episode, I said that this episode was not about review, but rather about pipelines. And I just want to show at the beginning of the uh, five minute video, Stephen told us that the five minutes would be one minute about previewing what the episode was going to be about, one minute about pre-reviewing um, how he's creating the um, the five minute videos, then reviewing. Now I think we're in the meta reviewing section of uh, the five minute video, we are talking about the process of creating these, this video of reviewing videos, which is very meta. Not about review, but rather about pipelines. And I mean that. One sense in which this episode is about review is that I'll be reviewing it as a way to optimize my pipeline. In oh, that's also very meta. So Stephen is going to review the video that he created about reviewing his video process, cre uh, creation process. Very meta. In a sense, this episode and its structure represents a benchmark. What I had to do was get five. A benchmark. For those of you who don't know what a benchmark is, it's um, like a standard. Like we might say that the benchmark is that a that all cars that are produced in America should uh, get at least 30 miles to the gallon. And maybe um, Ford and Toyota 
and uh, Subaru each create cars that uh, exceed that benchmark and they get 35 miles to the gallon, whereas other people um, create a car that doesn't quite meet that benchmark, but it's just a standard. Five clips and combine them via some automated process. And then I use that clip and combine it with another clip, two levels of combining. So I combined and took the output of that combining and then put it into the input of another combining. Oh my, did you catch that? That was, that was a little bit confusing, but he combined a clip and then he took the combined clips that he created and he combined them again. I think he said he did it three times. And perhaps that's why we saw um, in uh, here, uh, there was a clip running inside of a clip, and I'm thinking maybe there is uh, even more levels of combining. Let's keep going back to where we were. I think we're around here. And combine them via some automated process. And Stephen always uses an automated process that involves coding because Stephen is a coder, which is what we are hoping that all of you are going to learn to be too. If you can use coding to automate things, then you have more time in your life to do things that are less tedious that you enjoy more. And then I use that clip and combine it with another clip, two levels of combining. So I combined and took the output of that combining and then put it into the input of another combining. And then I did that one more time. So I felt like that was a, not too complicated, but, but um, complicated enough to be a good benchmark. There were several things that I had to do that I felt I, I could automate with code and it would save me a lot of time. And I plan to do those things. But when I do something like that, I want to be able to measure how, how much time it actually saved me. So, uh, I want to have a particular kind of video with a particular kind of structure that uh, I use as a benchmark to see if the time decreased and if so, by how much. So Stephen is going to create his own benchmark for how long it takes him to create a video. And then after he's automated all of these processes, he's going to see if his new process, which included coding automation, exceeds the benchmark, which is the goal. So um, a few episodes ago, he was telling us it was taking eight hours to create a five minute video. And now he's automated that process. That was his benchmark then. Maybe now it's only taking six hours. I don't know, I haven't asked him, but maybe it's taking only six hours to create it. That would be the new benchmark. And then he would try to automate using code again and maybe cut it down even further. If Steven takes his eight hour workday, and instead of spending the entire eight hours creating a video, if he only spends four hours creating the video, then he has four hours to work on other projects, which would be a really great thing for him. Let's keep watching. I would recommend to students and really to anyone to do something similar, which is when you have some sort of process in your life, some sort of pattern, write it down and then ask yourself, does it have to be that way? If it does, what kinds of processes do you have in your life or some kind of pattern? Maybe you do the same thing every morning and maybe you could make that um, more efficient. For example, I get up every morning, I have a lot of pets in my house and I have to feed every single one of them. So I could go first and feed my dog whose food is in the garage. And then I could go and feed my cat whose food is also in the garage. But would it be more efficient for me to go into the garage one time and get the cat food and the dog food? Wow, now I have automated or not automated, but I've refined my process a little bit. So I've only gone to the garage one time. See if there's anything in your life that you do repeatedly that you could find a way to make it a more efficient process. That's what Stephen's suggesting. Doesn't write down an alternative and then decide which one is better uh, according to some metric. Oh, metric. So uh, yeah, so you would, in, in my case, uh, my metric would be time. Uh, what is more efficient for me to feed my animals? But maybe the metric needs to be something else. Maybe the metric is more about uh, animal happiness. And maybe my bird who is screaming me in the morning is the one that I need to feed first, even if it's not the most efficient, because first I would need to go 
downstairs to where my bird is, but and my dog and my cat are up with me. So maybe it would be more efficient to feed my dog and cat as far as time, but my new metric is animal happiness. So I'm going to go and feed my bird first. So you have to figure out what your um, what you're going to be basing uh, whether your process is successful on and then creating a benchmark and then trying to exceed that benchmark. And there is Stephen's uh, 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 idea for his, for his life, for your life. Everybody should be using concepts of coding. Even if you're not using uh, coding on the computer, you're still using concepts like metrics and benchmarks and becoming more efficient on automating things. Uh, so that's what we mean by code your life. Think about these things in your everyday experiences. And let's listen to the last few seconds of this uh, music. All right. Thank you guys for joining us for another episode of Quarantine Coding Club. Look forward to having you join us again. Bye.